EVs are a fraud. And in this report, I'm going to prove it to you. If as a species we are using our limited resources to make humongous batteries to power irrelevant luxury conveyances so that wealthy, self-righteous, green evangelizing twats can be even more insufferable than ever before over lunch, then great, well done, very effective indeed. Go humanity. But if we're actually building EVs to reduce greenhouse as part of some purported climate solution, that's pretty much peak stupid right there, mainly because it's never gonna work. I'm John Yadogan from autoexpert.com.au, Newcast Cheap, Australia only website. God. This report is rated N for numbers and P for physics. Censorship authorities have classified it YHMED because your head might explode, dude. Especially if you didn't pay attention at school like so many people. Still, that's nothing the kiddies can't clean up with a pressure wash, some bleach and a good old lick of paint. Hashtag inheritance. Here we go. EVs are a fraud, but not for the reasons you think. And I'm not trying to straw man them. Like Morpheus, I'm merely trying to free your mind. EVs are actually pretty good to drive. They'd be excellent for reducing pollution in Australian cities. Provided the government also planned to do something about the epidemic of preposterously outdated trucks with no pollution controls whatsoever, shuffling all kinds of freight all over town all fucking day long. This, of course, is a uniquely Australian problem. But they won't do anything because you can't cross the trucking lobby and hope to live to tell the tale. EVs do actually emit many more dangerous particles from tyre wear, pretty clearly, because they're 25% heavier than equivalent conventional cars, and they damage the roads more for exactly the same reason. Tyres are made of hydrocarbons, of course, and the roads are both made of hydrocarbons and maintained entirely with hydrocarbon energy. So there's that. There's also the thorny issue of the extreme danger posed when an EV burns. It's hard to put out and they're highly toxic. And without mandatory recycling legislation, expired EV batteries are primed to become the next hexavalent chromium in the water, aren't they? Hashtag Erin Brockovich. Only this time it's going to be lithium hexafluorophosphate. And you don't want to drink that. In other words, we are deploying EVs, but at the same time, we are spectacularly fucking up the implementation of EVs in society. Go humanity. I drove an EV for a year, a Kona Electric. It was great. I really loved it. As daily transport, it rocked. But you did have to live life on the edge on those longer drives because of our third world recharging infrastructure. Point I'm trying to make, I am not an EV hater. I'm just not some EV zealot praying every evening at the altar of Elon Musk and hoping for the full electric utopia. I just can't do that. I'm too grounded, you know, vis-a-vis -vis reality. EVs are also good for our national energy security, potentially, so that's nice. And none of this is why they're a fraud. The fraud orbits governments dressing them up as a purported climate solution. And here's why they are not. And they will never be effective at reducing CO2. In New South Wales, our third world shithole's most populous state in 2019, we consumed 69.9 terawatt hours of electricity. And I know that's a big scary number. I got it from the Australian Energy Regulator. In the same year, according to the New South Shitsville government, emissions from making that electricity were 52 million tonnes of CO2 equivalent. That's 37% of the state's total emissions. Again, that is according to the New South Shitsville government. 
Transport was 28 million tonnes, that's about 20%. But only half of transport is light vehicles, such as your car, ute van, SUV, whatever. So light vehicles are really only about 10% of the state's total emissions. Electricity is therefore four times bigger ballpark as the problem goes. I'm not even including the fugitive emissions here, which are when you dig up coal to burn it to make electricity, the mine just farts endless methane gas, which escapes, which is why they call them fugitive emissions. Fugitive emissions are another 13 million tonnes, which means coal mines farting their fugitive emissions are a bigger emissions problem than all of our cars combined. And we do nothing about this. Sweet fuck all. Yes. There's a lot of political industry lobby group and other vested interest type worthless scumbags who want you to think about cars and EVs so you don't take a harder look at the real problem, frankly. 69.9 terawatt hours of electricity divided by 52 million tonnes of CO2 from burning the coal to make said electricity equals 744 grams of CO2 for every kilowatt hour on your electricity bill. This does not include the fugitive emissions because I am one hell of a generous mother to the other side of any debate on this issue. And I'm not trying to straw man them, not at all. If you turn the air conditioning on or plug your EV in at the shops, that's what it means, dude. 40 kilowatt hours into your EV for half a charge is 30 kilos of CO2. That's just how this works. Remote combustion is still combustion. There is no debate about these numbers. They're even worse in Victoria, 1.06 kilos per kilowatt hour. Hashtag generous mother lover. That's me. Those emissions per unit of electrical energy are an agreed set of facts. According to Ausgrid, the average daily energy use per customer is 15.2 kilowatt hours. That's therefore 11.3 kilos of CO2 per day per customer. Call it 4.1 tonnes every year per electricity customer on average. If you could take one house off the grid, you save about four tonnes. Take a million houses off the grid, four million tonnes. Let's switch to EVs now and have a look from that side. The faux Swedish, but actually Chinese, Polestar 3 is described by them as, quote, the SUV for the <coughs> electric age, which should come with its own vomit bag, if you ask me. It's just how it makes me feel. I can't help it. They further claim that it is sculpted, distinctive, sleeker and optimised. Even the colours, they say, are, quote, carefully curated. This is a Chinese SUV with an obscene 111 kilowatt hour battery that costs more than $155,000. That company has the goal to devote an entire chapter of its website to, quote, sustainability. Show me the 111 kilowatt hour battery in a consumer appliance that is sustainable. These are the nickel cobalt kinds of batteries that emit the kind of toxic off-gassing in a thermal runaway which can disable a person permanently if they simply get the fallout on their skin. Coming soon to a car park near you. Polestar offers plenty of bullshit up front vis-a-vis -vis sustainability about natural fibres in the composites and recycling textiles from discarded fishing nets. I'm not fucking making this up. And the Nappa leather featuring, 
quote, the strictest standards on animal welfare, which I'm sure the cows that were killed for the seats really, really, really fucking appreciate, by the way. I know I would. It's just intelligence insulting bullshit. Not so much data on actual sustainability, however. And this is curious to me, given the careful curation of the fucking colours. Carbon footprint? Like, sorry? <laughs> We've been too busy to work that one out. This is what these fuckers actually say publicly today about the carbon footprint of that $155,000 cobalt packing abomination. We just don't know. If that's not the tail wagging the dog, show me what is, dude. This monumentally excessive battery, 111 kilowatt hours, is an environmental disgrace. And unfortunately, they are not alone. Kia is about to release a ridiculous, luxurious, over-the-top EV called the EV9. Kia describes this plug-in effigy to environmental ineffectiveness as, quote, groundbreaking, captivating, epic, and exceptional. And that's just the tip of the superlative iceberg to come, I'm sure. Both these vehicles have the commercial crosshairs perfectly centred on that quintessential, wealthy, self-righteously nauseating, green evangelising, insufferable twat. You know who I'm talking about. The EV9 is a proper automotive monstrosity too, roughly the same size as a Kia Carnival, but it's half a tonne heavier, of course, because batteries are so fucking heavy. And this one has a battery with a preposterous 100 kilowatt hours of energy storage capacity. I'm absolutely certain the EV9 is going to be outstanding transportation, like outstanding, no doubt, in my mind. Spacious, versatile, comfortable, well-equipped, good to drive, excellent customer support. But the concept of cars like this being part of some kind of purported environmental solution is ridiculous. You do not save the planet in a Kia EV9 or a Polestar 3. And at least Kia, to its credit, is not claiming that you do, at least not at this point. But both vehicles are intrinsically rich green twat magnets. I'm saying rich because it's 155 grand for the Polestar 3 and the EV9 that you'd want to own is probably going to cost you about 120 grand. Actual price for that car not yet released, but that's the informed speculation. 120 grand for a Kia albeit one with a battery that weighs about as much as a picanto. Go back in time 10 years and tell me Kia would sell a 120k car before too long. I would have probably told you back then to make friends with a higher calibre of drug dealer because this is the kind of thing that happens when they cut the ready rock with drain cleaner. Every insider in the minerals industry who's gone on the record about lithium says one thing. Supply is going to be unable to meet demand globally and by a long margin, massive demand projected to increase substantially and therefore batteries will remain a very limited commodity for the foreseeable future. Therefore, if CO2 is a problem and batteries can help and they're a highly limited resource, then obviously we need to deploy them in the most effective possible way, state by state, nationally and globally. This just makes obvious sense, right? Not quite sure that the Minister for Room Temperature IQs in Degrees C and the patron saint for people who can't find their asses with both hands and a mirror would see it quite this way. But politics does appear to select for a certain calibre of individual personal opinion. So if hypothetically I needed a Kia Carnival sized conveyance, perhaps so that me and my lovely wife and my five ex-wives and perhaps even Tiffany from the office can all travel together to church on Sundays and talk about all of the things we've got in common. Hashtag stony silence. 
I might be moved to say fuck it and do the so-called right thing and buy a ridiculous EV9 instead of a filthy, stinking, polluting Carnival diesel. I can see people out there in the world following that particular bouncy ball of non-logic, albeit with fewer ex-wives. Let me know in the comments what your ex-wife grand total is and whether the current one is probably a keeper. Is there going to be another trade-in with a new model upgrade for you? I'd be very sad to trade in number six. She is exceptional. Imagine what an evangelizing pain in the frickin' ass I could be at barbecues in a vehicle like an EV9 or a Polestar 3. <laughs> I could be a doctor or a barrister at the golf club with my 120 to 155k abomination sandwiched between Mercedes Benzes, espousing its purported virtues until one of my contemporaries uses his putter as an ersatz enema. That might shut me up. Hashtag doubtful. I might actually enjoy that. Who would know? If I opt for that EV9 instead of a carnival, and if I charge it up exclusively using my rooftop solar, I'm going to save about 2.6 tonnes of CO2 every year. <laughs> Look me in the eye and tell me that that's not a teepee in my green golfing trousers, dude. That is the most CO2 that I can hope to save in one year by buying an EV9, 2.6 tonnes. And if I charge it up off the grid ever, I'll be saving less than that. But here's the thing, right? The real reason why EVs are such a climate action fraud. Let's just say that I go with that filthy, stinking, CO2 belching and otherwise polluting diesel carnival instead. And I have a chat with the Federal Minister for Ass Finding and I get him to donate what would have been my EV9 to a pilot scientific research project at the CSIRO. The propeller heads there could doubtless carve that ridiculously excessive 100 kilowatt hour battery into six smaller batteries, and they'd be about 16 kilowatt hours apiece. And that would be more than you'd need to take six houses, which already have solar arrays, effectively off the grid. And if you made notes earlier, dude, that would be 4.1 tonnes times six houses equals about 24 and a half frickin' tonnes of CO2 saved every year. Of course, my filthy CO2 belching diesel carnival does emit about 2.6 tonnes of CO2 every year if I drive at 15,000 k's in that time. So roughly 24 and a half minus roughly 2.6 is roughly 22 tonnes of CO2 saved just by using the same battery storage capacity differently. Versus 2.6 if you buy that absurdly huge EV9 or a car just like it, which is roughly as heavy as a Land Cruiser Sahara. Of course, if you run the numbers on a Polestar 3, it's an even bigger saving, isn't it? Because you'd get another house off the grid with its battery. If I were your prime mincer, Doing things my way would be roughly eight or nine times more effective. And that would go some small way to make Australia less shit. In fact, I'd have a Polestar three-sized bandsaw installed in the foyer of Parliament fucking house. And we'd carve one up every morning just before lunch so the public could see what a shit-hot job I was doing as their new PM on CO2. Hashtag not how you'd actually achieve this. You simply cannot save the planet incrementally one preposterously huge EV at a time. It can't happen. Thinking that it can is outright delusional. I'm expecting a lot of hate from this report, so please don't disappoint me. Let rip in the comments if you are that green evangelizing, self-righteous twat. I promise not to be offended. In fact, ratcheting it up just one notch, I promise not to care at all.
My give a fuck battery is on E, dude. I can't help it. It's a character defect. These numbers are not cherry-picked. In fact, I've been as kind as possible to the other side, and I've used reliable data. Taking houses off the grid is easier, quicker, and far more effective than deploying ridiculous, lardy assed EVs. It just is, because of facts. How inconvenient. That's how this works. Especially as battery supply is so limited, foreseeably, into the future, right around the world. Of course, it's not as easy to be an evangelising twat with a battery just stuck up the anus of your laundry, is it? Parking a Polestar 3 in the driveway confers far more green virtue status than inviting your friends, colleagues and family to see the photos you just took standing in the rectum of your laundry, which depict what you've done about CO2, even if it is in fact you know, nine times more effective. I'm going to leave you with this. A famous dead brainiac named Voltaire once famously said that every man is guilty of the good he did not do. And this is a kind of weaponized precursor to the concept of opportunity cost. Obviously, we have equality now. So on behalf of Big V and the intervening time, I invite women also to be guilty when they fail to do good, as well as governments, corporations, lobby groups, and sundry related reprehensible motherfuckers. We'd have to bring Big V up to speed on the modern world, of course, if subject to his reanimation. But once we did, he wouldn't even see the likes of a Polestar 3 or an EV9. Voltaire would simply say that these excessive EVs are guilty of failing to conserve 22 tonnes of additional CO2 because the good they're not doing is taking six houses off the grid instead of existing. This is Voltaire's opportunity cost of these big shitter EVs. These morbidly obese batteries are guilty of the good that we as a society have simply failed to do with them. And this is not Kia's or even Polestar's fault. They're just making a product that a certain class of enviro tosser will want to buy. The free market is just doing exactly the wrong thing because the framework in which they're operating is mentally ill. Every preposterous virtue signaling EV out there and the insufferable twat driving it, sipping that Kool-Aid on the road to electric utopia is a rolling monument to ineffective climate action. Every EV is guilty of a bunch of houses still being connected to the grid times four tonnes of CO2 annually apiece. Prove me wrong. Try using both brain cells and the facts. EVs are a fraud, dude. A conga line of mother lovers you would not invite around to your place to meet your sister are selling them to you as a climate solution. And it saddens me to say that the medium stray and human is easily dumb enough to believe it.